um, Dr. George Mazariegos from UPMC Pittsburgh. Uh, I think Kim Soles, for those of you who follow Kim on Facebook, he put in this like first ever picture, which kind of immortalized the first ever um, bulk intestinal summary. So we are really uh, excited. We are looking forward to your talk and presentation. Uh, I could not attend the session, but from what I've heard, I, um, people told me that it was very interesting and lively discussions. My God, you want to add something? On that? Well, we're glad and happy to be here. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman, and uh, to the whole community, uh, Tim, Michael, uh, Jake, for their support as we um, join or will try to uh, to continue the tradition of um, of BAMP uh, in this challenging field um, for uh, 2019 and moving forward. I, I want to uh, uh, really thank the facilitators of our session, uh, Deb Sudan, who initiated these discussions with him and Michael um, maybe two years ago or a year and a half ago, uh, Deanna Cardona from Duke, uh, Phil Ruiz from, uh, from uh, Miami, and, uh, and Jake, who uh, counseled us through the development of the session. Um, I'll give a very brief presentation, take some questions, take your advice. Uh, the, the format of our of our workshop was four hours, and uh, in the first uh, two, I gave an overview of the clinical gaps in intestinal transplantation, uh, which uh, has uh, has really been altered and undergone significant change over the past uh, ten years with uh, the advent of intestinal rehabilitation. Uh, this uh, transplant phenomenon has decreased, and it really uh, has really forced the uh, uh, the need for collaboration. Uh, of what of what is uh, can become a rare procedure at individual centers, uh, Deanna Cardona then followed up with a um, a, a, a straw man overview of the literature of where we uh, what has been reported in early uh, acute cellular rejection uh, in intestine transplant, and then we focused our second session on ABMR again with Diana Cardona from Duke uh, and Deb Sudan, uh, giving clinical case presentations. Um, the, uh, uh, the participants are, are uh, shown here, and I uh, really do uh, feel that it was a, a significant uh, interactive session uh, with global representation uh, from, uh, from Canada, France, uh, Sweden, and um, Brazil, Japan, uh, and several centers in the United States, including uh, Cincinnati, Columbia, uh, Duke, uh, Indiana, on Sinai, UCLA. Uh, and I apologize if I didn't get everyone's name here. I think what was uh, what was uh, really important to, to note that for those who weren't participating in the other sessions, these many of these uh, uh, individuals came uh, solely for this uh, for this afternoon and um, and really contributed significantly uh, to the discussions. Uh, what we discussed in the in the early uh, first session were the gaps of intestinal transplantation that it is a rare disease um, and that requires collaboration to uh, really drive knowledge and implement knowledge faster. And, and uh, we have not done historically a very good job of doing that in our, in our field, but we, uh, we can do better. Uh, it is a transplant without consistent use of HLA typing. Uh, and it is, like our colleagues in thoracic transplant, a, um, uh, or, or VCA perhaps, uh, one of the uh, one of the transplant systems where uh, ACR is significantly problematic, both from a source of morbidity early on as well as long-term changes. Um, we have a narrow window between therapy and toxicity. Uh, the ABMR diagnostics were far behind in uh, in the diagnostic uh, characterization of of this pathology, um, and so it's uh, challenging and variable. Uh, and chronic rejection is the major cause of graft loss uh, in both children and in adults. Uh, monitoring for rejection is, is evolving, um, and we have uh, two, two variations of practice. One where we uh, routinely monitor asymptomatic patients, and so the challenge of understanding uh, those changes that, uh, that are seen in asymptomatic patients versus the, the symptomatic um, uh, group. Um, we divided our afternoon into two um, two-hour blocks. The first discussion was really around T-cell mediated ACR grading criteria, uh, and we did uh, spend that time to get consensus around revision uh, and review of the historical classification uh, schema uh, that's been published for um, for 15 to 20 years. 
uh, we include a discussion of the um, uh, type of apoptotic epithelial cell that is included in this criteria. We gain some clarity around significant, um, uh, around groups of grading of degree of uh, presence of apoptotic cells um, and had some discussion about that in relation to what's been published in the literature. And we emphasize the importance of the clinical scenario and of looking at the lemon appropria. Um, we had some other preliminary discussion on other, other impacts of EOs, as was mentioned by the other speaker. Um, this was the uh, criteria published um, more than 15 years ago that uh, we put as a straw man for our discussions. Uh, very basic, uh, but uh, the group and consensus uh, did, did really go through each of these categories, the importance of maintaining an indeterminate category, particularly uh, because we know that those can evolve. Uh, and then, and then we'll be working in our in our document manuscript uh, to uh, to make some subtle but we believe important uh, difference differences and updates in the in the definition of mild, moderate, and severe ACR uh, in relation to um, uh, to how these uh, criteria can be can be edited somewhat to reflect our at least our clinical understanding and some of the discussion that we had in our group. This was the. This will be revised and sent out to the participants and to the community for, uh, for, for input and uh, uh, for submission. Our second, our second part of the hour was uh, of the afternoon was really centered around ABMR and future uh, directions, and it was clear in this area that um, that we have to do further, uh, further discussion, further um, working together to really identify the important terms of. Uh, this pathology for our community uh, and to get some agreement around uh, common uh, terms that will be important to, to do in any kind of uh, grading. Uh, so there was a consensus made to, uh, to plan for a multi-center case webinar, case review uh, among the participants in the next six months uh, to help define pertinent components of an ABMR diagnosis uh, and to and what clinical criteria needed to be included in that uh, discussion. Uh, and then in the last, uh, in the last uh, closing part, we, uh, we brainstormed around future discussions um, and what areas would be important for the community, including um, the, the ones that are listed there, uh, molecular markers, understanding anatomic variability of, uh, of changes that we see in the upper allograph versus the ilium or colonic allograph, um, and important uh, but yet to be uh, determined uh, workshops around EBV infection, uh, early versus uh, more established BTLD, and then a, 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 an important but uh, topic that we did not get a, a chance to touch on was the understanding of the inflammatory changes and IBD-like changes that we see in intestinal allograft uh, recipients. Uh, so our, our media task is for summary of the session part one, uh, and then the planning of the webinar, uh, which, we, um, which we will uh, work on in the next six months. Uh, we also did have a consensus that uh, the group is a very cordial one and uh, that uh, dinner was enjoyable even though it was a small group. Um, it was a, a, a great opportunity to participate and learn from uh, all of you and we want to thank you for that chance. So just to think you will come back in two years? We would love to come back in two years. We have a lot of time to do in between time, but we, we would be glad to be invited. And there will be a band classification for interest still yes. transplant? That's we'll good. That's good. Any further suggestions? Suggestions? Just don't repeat all the mistakes we did in other organs. <laughs> Thank you very much. So with that, um, there is an extended coffee break now for those who can Stay around. There will be an overall meeting, ASHI band meeting summary given by Dr. Peter Nickerson in room 301, uh, which is, I hope, synthesizing what, what the two communities accomplish here. With other as I thank all speakers and all of you contributing to the band classification. Have a safe travel home.